Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to STD Gems. It is my great pleasure to infect you with the dankest STDs from the C++ standard library. Today we're going to be looking at the remove boys. Uh, specifically remove if, but also some other stuff. And uh, these guys are super useful. Let's say you've got a container vector of bullets or a vector of enemies and those guys, some of those guys die. You want to get those guys out of your container, you use remove if. It's very clean, it's very nice. Now I've already gone over remove if uh, in the intermediate series in the video on algorithm. But since it's such an important guy, I'm going to go over it again here for completion's sake. So how does remove if work? Well, if we look at this guy. Um, in general, it's going to take an iterator range, so first and last, and it's going to take a unary predicate. So that's a predicate, it's going to return a bool, uh, and that's going to work on every element in the range. So how does this work? Well, we've got a vector, we've got some values in it. Uh, we got a predicate that is going to return true for these values. We pass remove if our range, so iterator to the beginning, the end, we're going to do the whole container. How does it work? Well, here's how it works. It is going to run over that thing. It's going to run the predicate on each element. It's going to say 0 doesn't match, 1 doesn't match, 2 does match, delete it. We're going to destroy that mother. Uh, and we're also going to remember this position. Go to the next guy. Oh, it's another guy to be destroyed. I'm going to destroy him. Okay, we go to the next guy. Not to be destroyed. Okay, well, let's move that guy over here. We do a move. Next one. Not... Ah, we gotta destroy this guy. Ah, so when we, uh, when we move this guy over here, we are also going to advance this iterator to the next destroyed boy. Uh, so now we go over to five. Five is a destroy boy, so we get rid of him. We go to six, do not destroy, move six over here. I should get I should get rid of that. We move six over here. Seven. Ah, we also have to uh, move this iterator, but you get the idea. I don't have to move this iterator every single time. So, seven, move him. Eight, move him. 9, move him, 10, destroy that boy, and there you go, you're done. You have run your remove if. The return value for remove if is going to be iterator to the new end of the container, or alternatively, an iterator to the garbage section of the container, because this stuff here is all detritus. It's all garbage, it doesn't mean anything anymore. If it were strings, it would all be empty husks. If it were ints, it would be garbage values that don't mean anything because they've been already copied over or they were part of the deletion targets. Either way, you get this uh, iterator, you use that iterator, you call, you know, vec.erase, and you erase this section, and then you're done. You might be wondering, why doesn't this algorithm erase this stuff for you? And the answer is that these algorithms, they work on iterators, right? So they don't work at the container level. They have no concept of a container. They can't call the erase function. They only work with values. They shuffle those values around, and then they return an iterator, and it's up to you to actually mutate the container to get rid of the, uh, the stale section. Now, a nice thing that you might have noticed here is that the order is preserved before and after the removal. The remaining guys all have the same relative order. And this is important. Uh, this is actually something that I, in previous videos, I think I actually taught the opposite. Because I, for some reason, I had it in my head that the order is not preserved. Uh, the reason why I thought this is because there's another way you can run this algorithm. Uh, you delete the guys that are to be deleted based on the predicate. And then you have these empty spaces, you move the remaining uh, live guys from the back into those empty spaces. But you leave these guys, guys like this, guys like this, untouched. 
so you don't have to reshuffle the entire container after the first deletion. You only shuffle to fill in the blank spaces. This does not preserve order. Now you've got, you know, seven, eight, nine in these weird places here. But for a very large container with a lot of elements, let's say you've got a very large container, you delete one boy up here. Uh, with remove if, you'd have to shuffle all these guys. But with this algorithm, you only have to move this guy over to here and you're done. Uh, so this algorithm does not exist in the standard library, but it is actually very common. It's usually called swap and pop. You can implement it very simply if you need it. In general, just stick to remove uh, if. Uh, but if you have a huge container and you find yourself doing a lot of expensive moves when you don't need to, you just know that this is an option for you. But we're going to stick with remove if. So let's look at implementing remove if. Uh, or not implementing it, but using it. So we've got an array, you know, you know the, the vector, you, you know the drill, it's got words in it. And what I want to do is I want to remove all the words that don't contain an E. So I'm going to call remove if, I'm going to run it over the entire range of the container, and the predicate is going to take strings, because that's what the container is of, and it's going to return a bool, and the bool is going to be calculated using std count, which is another algorithm uh, that I will be covering in a future video. But the way it works is it just counts all the elements that match. So here we're going to count, we're going to run over all the characters in the string, we're going to count the number of E's. If that number is zero, then we're going to return true, meaning we should remove that from our uh, range. So we do that, we get the new end of the container, and then we call erase with the new end and the actual end, and it will remove the stale section of the container. And uh, if we run that, before we had 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Now we have 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it works beautifully. You call remove, you call erase, and you're done. So that's remove if. Remove is the same idea, except instead of using a predicate, you pass it a value and it removes all the ones that match that value. So it's less flexible than remove if, but it works the same. Now remove copy and remove copy if. They seem like it's, you know, similar to remove if. In fact, these guys are almost identical to copy if, in that they run over a range and they copy them except uh, if it matches some predicate. So this will copy them if it matches. This one will copy if it doesn't match the predicate. That's the only difference uh, between remove copy uh, if and copy if. So it's, it's almost, these guys are almost pointless, just redundant. You could get the same effect just by uh, negating the predicate for copy if. But uh, they're there if you really want them. Uh, replace and replace if, uh, what they do is instead of, you know, reshuffling and giving you an iterator to the end, uh, if the thing matches, so what it does is it runs over the entire range and anything that matches gets replaced by whatever value you give the algorithm. So if you run it and you pass it 69, you pass it this range, you pass it this predicate, it is going to replace these guys, you know, with 69. So I mean, it, I don't know, it could come in handy, but I don't use it that often, replace if. And replace copy if does, it's the same idea, right? It, uh, instead of doing the replacement in place, what it's going to do is uh, it is going to copy all these values over to here, but any of the ones that uh, match the predicate, instead it is going to replace those with the value that you give it. So it'll be 4, no, 5 is going to be a 69, and then 6, 7, 8, 9, and then another 69. So it's going to look like this. That's what uh, replace copy if does. And I think you can already get an idea for this, but uh, even though the standard library looks like it has so many functions and you can't possibly learn them all, you'll soon realize that a lot of functions are very similar, some are almost identical to each other. So in fact, the amount of functions that you need to learn to master the whole thing is a lot less than you might think, which is good news if you're, you know, interested in mastering the entire standard library. Actually, now that I mention it, there's another dude in here that uh, could really go into this video, and that is unique, and unique 
copy. So what it does is it removes consecutive duplicate elements in a range. So if I rewrite B here, so it has some consecutive twos here and some consecutive nines here, uh, and then I call unique, get the new end and do the erase, what I should get is it removes the consecutive duplicate. So now there's only one two where there were three here and there's only one nine. Now note that if I were to say put a nine in here uh, and then run this, you would then get two nines because that one wasn't consecutive. So it will not create a unique set, uh, but it will remove all the duplicates that are consecutive. And if you sorted your container, then all duplicates would become consecutive. And if you run unique on a sorted container, it would then have a unique set. And you could also run unique copy and that would, uh, you know, it would copy these values so it would copy 0 into here, it would copy a 2, it would skip these guys, it would copy a 7, uh, it would copy a 2, and a 9, and a 10. And if you were to give it a, uh, a back inserter, it would put these new copies at the back of the container that you gave it to. Just some interesting ideas of how you could mix and match that. Those are the basic uh, removers, replacers and removers uh, that you got to work with. Now, something like remove if we use this all the time. It can be annoying to have to run the algorithm, get the uh, the iterator, call a race, call begin and end on the container. Uh, what I like to do is I like to build up a little library of uh, templated utility functions that do this in a more concise way uh, because I call these functions so often. So what I might do is I might do like void uh, remove. I don't know, I might call it like uh, chili remove and it will be templated on container and uh, class templated on a predicate type. So chili remove, it's going to take a uh, container reference to cont and predicate. Pred will take that by value. And what we would want to do is basically we just want to do what's going on in here. So let's copy and paste this. We'll go uh, we'll go const auto new end is equal to remove if, and we're going to go container dot begin, container dot end. We are going to run our predicate on that, and then we're going to erase from new end to container dot end. And there you have your chili remove. And then for this guy, I can replace this stuff here with just chili remove. Run that on container A. Give it a predicate. And then we don't need this here. So it simplifies your stuff a lot more. Uh, and if I build this, it should work. No, it doesn't work. Okay, well. A is undeclared identifier, makes sense. Let's replace that. And now it works fine. So yeah, utility functions like these, nice and helpful. Keep your code nice and concise. Stop repeating yourself, writing the same stuff over and over again in multiple places. And uh, we call that dry, by the way, don't repeat yourself. And it can keep you dry within your project. It can also keep you dry between projects because you can build up a nice little file of these general templated um, utilities that run on basically any type you want, any container you want. And you can just move these easily between projects and they just work in any project you have because they're nicely templated. And that's going to about do it for the uh, remove boys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more Stid Gems. Mm -hmm.